and we're live. All right, guys. Uh, thanks again about last week. I was completely not ready. Um, hopefully, I have all my ducks in a row this week, and we can cover some cool stuff. Um, probably going to be a shorter class, just because I don't want to go on just going uh, step by step. Um, but tonight we're going to cover some basic phrases you might use around encampment. Um, which will include a lot of review that we've already done. And a handful of new phrases that I think everyone will appreciate. But, in keeping with the pattern, our Moomor of the night is Fjorga. Fjorga is, if you're keeping up, four. Alright. So, if you're playing along at home, we used to do a letter of the week. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't gone back and seen where we stopped. Because I stopped doing them for the runic lessons. Um, we might pick that back up next week. Um, if I feel like we need to. Alright. So. Phrases around encampment. Um, are more or less to impress those awesome like five people we have walked through at a typical uh encampment down at 14 george or hopefully more this year um and one of the things that i learned during my very first enactment was that you always need a code word for when the public is walking up. So, we, as I was taught by the awesome Roland, typically use hello, or, if you'll remember, Helsa. Um, but any of the greeting words that we've covered over the last handful of videos, uh, we had a whole video on greetings and introductions, so just as a refresher, And to clarify something as well, that came up a lot on that worksheet that I got up. By the way, um, if you have, if y'all want to do another one of those worksheets, let me know. Um, I can get one together, but if not, I'm not going to do extra work. So let me know. Um, so. Reviewing of our introduction words. Uh, again, we've got Hailsa up here at the top. Uh, Dog or Gothendagar. Gothenmorgen. And Gothenot. Um, there was some confusion on Gothenot, and I talked to Roland about this already. Um, in English, we don't often use good night as a greeting. Um, however, if you think in terms of a lot of other languages, um, German, for instance, uh, as well as Spanish and a couple others, um, good night is just a common a greeting as good morning. Uh, it all just depends on where the sun is when you see somebody. So, um, 
it is an int it is a, a greeting word. It's not just a, a word of parting. So after you have said hello, the why do I keep closing my pen? The next common phrase that you want to throw out there. And our good southern hospitality is Hvegging over there. there. Um, and you might remember that literally translates to um, how's it going? Um, that word ginger is directly related to our word going, go. Um, if you're a historical buff, well, that's <laughs> since your historical buffs. Fun little side note. There is a um, a famous Swedish king, the the one that founded the Rus settlements in Russia, is Rolf Ginga, which is often translated as um, Rolf or Rolf. Uh, the walker or the wanderer. But anyway, just a, a side tangent. Um, so the response to that would be either that's going well, so it is going well, or that's going ill, as in ill, poorly. And I'm kind of going quickly through these since these are pretty much review. So, one more that is review is introducing oneself. And then asking someone what their name is. So, Ek Haiti Skeggy. And Havat Haiti so, I am called Skeggy. What are you called? Or are, my name is Skeggy. What are you called? Yay, Wigless here. Awesome. Um. One of the. Sorry. Gotta get my notes. Uh, two of the improper ways that I have seen or heard before doing introductions. And one of these I, I threw at you at the worksheet. Uh, mean nothing air or 
ek im. So literally these two translate as my name is and I am. Um, however, you don't want to use these in terms of introducing your name. Um, they're both perfectly logical, but for whatever reason, that's not what's used. Um, so, for instance, if I wasn't introducing myself and I could say, uh, uh, like, I mean, nothing air, I mean, fullers. Uh, so, my name is my father's. Um, and that's a logical sentence. But saying min nothin er or nothin er skeki is not uh, is not uh, is not correct. And as for the reasoning behind that, it's just not done. I don't know. Um, it's the same thing as in like Spanish. You don't say you know, yo soy Miguel. You say me amo es Miguel or me amo Miguel. All right. So, are there any questions on the review half of this video? So, um, in encampment, again, we're not really going to be holding full conversations with one another in Old Norse yet. Um, given a few years, given people nerding out like I do, we might be able to get some basic conversations down. But I think it would be fun to be able to greet someone, tell them your name, and tell them a little bit about yourself. Um, kind of the introduction language script speech. Um, so what... I've got a handful of phrases together. Um, and as always, as I go through this, if you have a, a question about one in particular or you want to know how you would say something or another, um, please, yeah, throw it at me. Um, so, for example, I'm going to pull back up that introducing my name. and then add an extra phrase onto it. And this is, this right here really explains why you shouldn't use ek m for telling somebody your name, because it can get kind of confusing in this sentence right here. So, ek heti skeki, ek m kal. Um, I don't think I have to really explain the structure, uh, the social structure of Old Norse society to all of y'all, but I'll review it just in case. Um, so... Like most Indo-European societies, it is divided into three groups of people. Um, at the top is your Jarl. And these are these are classes of people, so there are lots of subclasses underneath this. But you have your Jarl, your Karl, and your Thrall. Um, and if we want to do a bigger video on 
the social structure of Old Norse society. I think most of every one of us knows it to some extent or another, but if we want to do that for a later video, that, that would take up an entire hour on its own. Um, so, but in this, in this sentence, uh, ek heti skeggy, ek in call. So, I am skeggy. My name is skeggy. And I am of the Carl class. I'm, I am a Carl. You could also, for, a, a longer word, is ekim kolomado, um, which is just means Carl man, or I'm a male Carl. Um, so, since I know we have at least one female in attendance, and I'm just gonna go with your real name because I know you haven't quite picked out a reenactment name yet. So, ik heti Nikki, and I'm spelling it differently, but that's, yeah, you're getting that, too bad. And ek im kal kona. So, you'll see this word kona a lot. Um, it means everything from woman to queen to uh, wife. So, the, the word for woman didn't really establish itself uh, in the same way that mother did. Well, in the same way that Karl mother did. It's a very specific word. Um, but, so just, just be on the lookout. If you ever see that Kona at the end of something, it means woman. Um, now, you wouldn't think that somebody would introduce themselves by their class. But it was so important to the structure that to an outsider, it would definitely be something you would want to put out there. Um, and another thing that it would be Sorry if you can hear my little one. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Apologies. Um, so another thing that would be a fun thing, in my opinion, to tell uh, outsiders, I'm referring to, it. so from what I understand, flatlanders is the term we use for like the guests that come in. I'm using Saxons. Um, um, I know Seth, Sons of Loki, has a couple actual Saxons, but meh. Um, so a fun thing to, to tell the uh, Saxons that come and visit us is what your occupation is. Um, so... I tried to get this nice and varied, and given the range of jobs that I know many of us take care of, it's not very <laughs> varied. So, um, Ekums, excuse me, 
Eck in Smither or Smitherin, Smitherin rather, uh, means I am so just Eck in Smither means I am a Smith. Um, if you are the Smith or the Master Smith, you might say. Ekim Smitherin. Um, and that just means smith. Uh, it actually means crafter of metal, stone, or wood. So if you want to get more specific, you can say a handful of different ones. Um, and some of these you might recognize, and some of them you may not. Uh, what was the other one I was going to use? Alright. So. So you can say, Ek M. Yarn Smitha? which is a blacksmith, um, an ironsmith. Ekim Tre Smitha, uh, which is a literally a tree smith. Um, it's like a woodworker, carpenter. A Gul Smitha, Smitha rather, is a goldsmith. And a Skip Smitha, is a, a shipwright or a, a shipbuilder. Um, so pretty much, if you're involved in building or crafting anything, you can take that word and add smither after it. So logically, this isn't one I've looked up, but I could say, um, well, I'll go with Seth's example. That he didn't even realize he gave me. Ooh, that's okay. Make it, that's actually legible. So I could say, Ekim Yodsmitha. And so I am a mead smith. I am a mead maker. And it's logical. Uh, I don't know if that technically exists, but <laughs> that that works. Um, and then also you could simply say Um, say, Voland, you're in the smithy, actually hitting on you know, hitting on iron or something like that, and someone comes up and asks, well, what are you doing? And you can simply respond, ex smitha. Um, literally, I am crafting or I am smithing. Um, one that I will probably use, and I know, for instance, uh, Brick, who is your scald, may be interested in. Ekim Skalden. I am the Skald. So.
So if it was simply Ekim Skald, it would be I am a Skald, I am a poet, um, storyteller, bard. Um, but that, that little I-N at the end it makes it THE Skald. Um, and then I've got two more good phrases for you that I think we'd be able to use around camp pretty often talking to the Saxons. And one that I need to look up um, here I'll go ahead and answer Volan's question there. Um, the I assume you're talking about the, the Native Americans where they were encountered in Vinland in Haleland. were the Skralinga. So, and that's the plural. Um, the singular is simply Skraling or Skralinga. And um, it literally means the wearer of skins. It was pretty much a derogatory term. Um, used against not just the Native Americans in North America as we know it today, but um, also used against the Native Greenlanders. Um, and in fact, and in some circles, it is still used against the Native Greenlanders, and they really, really resent it. Um, All right, Seth, I see you talking about making a sizer. I've got four and a half gallons going right now, and I've got another five gallons going by the end of tonight of mead. I've got a, a traditional a dragon fruit, um, Martha Washington's recipe, and a pie mint made with muscadine grapes. So, yeah. Oh, and I've got a, a, a boche, too, so a burnt honey cider. Um, or team and burnt honey mead. So uh, we'll be trading recipes. All right. So another good set of phrases that we'll have going is that air blank mean. So this is that is my insert word. So some of the big ones that we'll often have is uh, skuld. So that is my shield. Boga. That is my bow. So that air boga mean. Oix. Uh, which is axe. So that air oix mean. And that air sverth mean. That is my sword. So again, this is shield, bow, axe, sword, and then another important one that we use around camp a lot would be, let's see if I remember how to spell it. Oh, I might have it up right now. I'm trying to remember how to spell sax. It's not quite spelled the same way. I believe it's soix.
spelled like that. Um, I'll double check that one and get back. All right. So one last phrase for tonight, and this is really directed right at Seth because this would be a phrase that only he would be able to use for now. Let me make that a little bit bigger so you can actually see it. Sorry. All right. So, Seth, say it with me. Eck. M. Yarlan. Loka. Sina. So, ek im yarlan. Loka. Sina. So, this is I am the Jarl of the Sons of Loki. Um, and for the rest of it, that didn't make this one a specific one. With the exception of Voland, who is also a Jarl, I will do that big, long phrase later. We gotta find a shorter way to say our names. So the rest of us can say ek in svertakari yarls mean ek in svertakari yarls mean and this svertakari uh, it literally means the the sword taker which makes me jokes about that if you want believe me I've thought of them all already. But it's basically the person who swears an oath to his Jarl. So everyone below a Jarl would be a Svertakari. And in fact, if the Jarl swore an oath to a Kungur or a Kona, a king or a queen, then he would also be a Svertakari. Uh, it comes from the tradition of actually holding your Jarl's sword and swearing your oath on his steel. So, um, all right, that is all I have for tonight. Um, I'm, I will probably be away from the computer for the rest of the night. But if you are wanting to ask questions about any specific word or anything like that, y'all know where to find me. I'll have I have Messenger on my phone, so I'll be able to uh, take care of a lot of those questions. Um, I will go ahead and warn you; it'll probably take me longer than usual to get back to you on specific Old Norse words. The the search engine for my dictionary is not working very well so I am having to kind of scrap together on resources um, so yeah let me know what you want to do next week because I'm running out of ideas um, and I know that Voland and I had talked about possibly having a big script for a couple major events say for battles or if we're holding a judgment scene or the home gang tournament that the sons of Loki are talking about putting on for us 
Um, we can set up a script for that. We'll, we can work through that together. Uh, other than that, go to the notes. Hey, be well.